Hi there, so in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make a reading log that will actually be one Google form that creates a spreadsheet with a separate tab for each student. Um, and you're doing this actually with the magic of some formulas. So the very first thing I did was I created my Google form. So here's my form as a student would see. So a student's gonna come along, they're gonna choose their name, they're gonna put in their book title. So maybe they read Skippy John Jones. Uh, by the author whose name is currently escaping me, so I'll just put name, and they check what type of book, and they hit picture and submit. And what it's actually doing is it's dumping into this particular spreadsheet. Now, you guys have used things like this in the past, um, but you might be thinking like, well, I need to figure out how many books the kids have read, when they've read it, um, all sorts of different things like that. And one giant spreadsheet doesn't really help you. So what we're actually gonna do is we're going to take this data and have it migrate onto a separate spreadsheet for each kid. So the first thing I like to do is I actually like to create a template that we're going to work from. So I'm just going to add a new sheet and I'm just going to call this um, student name so that I remember that I have to put student names in here. Oops. Student name reading log. And then what we'll do is once we have this all set up, we'll just clone it and make other copies. So the first thing I want to do is at the top here, I'm actually just going to create a field that says student name in A1. And then in B1, it's actually going to display the student's name. And I'll show you how we'll do that in a second. And then down here, I want to have the same fields that I have up here. So timestamp, name, book title, author, type of book. So I'm just going to copy those and I'm going to paste them in right there. And just make them a little easier to see, I'm going to bold them and maybe change the fill color to a gray so they kind of pop out a little bit more for the kid. Um, and maybe I'll make the font a little larger. So they're 12s, kind of make my columns a little, long, little larger here, just by double clicking them and scooting them over. All right, so we should be good. Now, uh, I was going to do the same thing as student name, so I'll make this 12. All right, so the first thing I have to tell my form to do is to choose student names. So I actually do that with something called data validation. So I want student names to be a drop down menu here in B1. So I'm going to click on D1, I'm going to go to data validation, and basically I'm going to say, in this particular field, I want you to choose from this range. So I click on here and it says what data. And so what I do is I click exactly where I want to get the data from. So I'm gonna click on form responses and I'm gonna click on B2 through B7. Now I might have other students come in, so maybe to make math, math a little easy, I'm gonna say to B40. Maybe I'm gonna have every student enter at least once. So I hit okay and then I click save. And so now if I go back to that tab, I have this little drop down menu. And so what that's done is it's going to look at that column of data. And even though Avery might enter a book one, two, three, four times, Avery's only going to show up once. That's what data validation does for us. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Michael, let's say. And now I want his data to display. So I'm actually going to put a really fancy formula in here. And I'm going to explain the formula, but don't get bogged down by that. I'll, I'll copy and paste it into um, the comment section of this video, and you can use it yourself. But basically what it says is if there's nothing chosen in B1, it's actually going to give you a message that says, please choose a name from the list. Once you've chosen a list, it's going to query the very first tab, the one where all your data is dumping, called Form Responses 1, and it's going to look from cell A2 all the way to E. So what it's actually going to do here is in Form Responses 1, it's going to grab whatever data exists for that name from cell A2 all the way to just, it says cell E because it's going to be anything in E. It could be E100, 500, etc. And so we're just going to put E in. And then what it's going to do is it's saying, okay, I'm going to query that area, but I got to figure out what to display. So I'm going to select everything, that's what the star means, where B equals whatever I've chosen in B1. Like I said, don't let the formula bog you down. If anything, you can copy it, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over here to uh, A4, and I'm going to click in this little, uh, the formula field, and pick paste and then hit enter, and let's see what happens. Oh, there it goes. So I chose Michael, and it's showing me the two books that he's read. If I were to change a student name, like to Avery, it shows me her name. Nick shows me his. Sam shows me his, okay? Um, now, a couple of things that I wanna do is I actually wanna change this 
font a little bit better just so it doesn't display, right? So I'm gonna make it bold and I'm also gonna make it red just so I know real clearly what student I'm actually choosing from. So once again, remember, we just use this to change. Now, the other thing that I might wanna do is, um, I know for instance in second grade they have a 70 book challenge, but it's actually the number of chapter books and the number of picture books. So wouldn't it be cool if it totals? So I actually can do that over here. So I'm gonna set a new area up called totals and I'm gonna have chapter books and picture books. And so this is another type of formula. This is actually a formula that will say count if. So it's actually saying count if what? So count if, um, I'm gonna actually be looking for E4 through E200. And then I have to actually put in quotation marks what I'm looking for. So like I'm looking for the word chapter. And so now it's actually going to count that. It says count if from E4 to E200 equals chapter one. And then just below it, I'm gonna copy it, paste back in and change this from chapter to picture. So now what it's doing is it's counting the number of chapter books, counting the number of picture books. And if I want a grand total right here, I can just say this equals, uh, let's see, that's gonna be H4 plus H5. And so it's actually gonna give me a total. And just like I've done before, I can actually you know, pretty this up a little bit by doing bold, you know, maybe make this red, whatever I wanna do. So it's really easy for the student to actually see how many books that they've read. So I have this set up. Remember we said we just made a template and it might, you, I mean, you can use this little drop down menu to change real quickly between students, which is one thing that you can do. Or if you wanna have separate tabs set up, which is nice because you can easily print them out. Or in a second video, I'll show you how you can share each tab to the individual student. All you need to do is go down here and say duplicate. And then where it says copy a student name, I'm gonna change that to my first student's name, which was Avery. And then I'll do the same thing here where I duplicate and change it to my second student's name, which I forgot what that was, Juan. So I have Avery and Juan. I'm actually just gonna drag this around so they go in order. So Avery and then Juan, and then I just continue with the rest of the students in my class. If I click on Avery's log, it says Michael, remember, because that was what it was on the template. So I just have to switch it to Avery and we're good to go. And then for Juan, I can switch it to his, and then we're good to go. So like I said, you just continue that for the rest of these students in your class. Um, two little helpful hints that I'll let you know about ahead of time from setting this up for Julie and for, um, uh, for Maria is the very first thing that you wanna do before you even start making this sheet is put one entry in for every student. Even if it's just a test book, it's fine because that will actually allow this data validation to work better for you. If you don't have the data validation set up with one, um, sorry, if you don't have the Google form entered with one book for each student, you won't have all the students there in the list to choose from. So just do that first when you create the form, Put in a fake book for each kid and you'll be good to go. So that's part one. Like I said, just sort of setting up the form so that you'll have separate sheets for each kid and it does automatic calculations for you. And the next video, I'll show you how you can share separate tabs with individual students so they can check on their progress at any time. Thanks for watching the video.